Welcome back. Well, more now on the passing of former Prime Minister Malcolm Fraser. We understand he died peacefully at home in the early hours of this morning after a brief illness. And we're going to discuss the life of Malcolm Fraser a little more. And we're joined now by News Corp political editor Samantha Maiden. Samantha, good morning to you. A sad day. Um, Malcolm Fraser, in your opinion, how will he be best remembered as, as a Prime Minister? Well, he's an enormous figure in Australian political life. He entered Parliament in 1955. So you think about it, he has been part of the political fabric of Australia for more than 60 years. Many people will always remember him, of course, as Prime Minister and the heady days of the dismissal of the Gough Whitlam government. That was obviously a, a huge event uh, in Australian public life. But the fascinating thing about Malcolm Fraser uh, is that he played a big role in public life before that event and he continued to play a really passionate uh, role in, in public life uh, for many, many years after he left uh, politics. Um, he's continued to write, uh, he's continued to debate. Um, he healed his relationship with Gough Whitlam and the rift uh, between those two men over the years and they often appeared in certain campaigns together and he's remained a passionate advocate um, for refugees, something that at many times has left him at odds with the Liberal Party um, and, and, and in a sense almost uh, led to him to be excommunicated in a way um, both uh, sort of by his own actions and by the actions of his former colleagues from the Liberal Party. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see, uh, you know, in death, I think, if some of that can also be healed and, and, uh, and you know, the, the things that he did and the contribution that he made to the Liberal Party and to Australia is honoured. He has uh, been quite critical, as you say, of the, of the party, including uh, the PM at the moment, uh, Mr Abbott. Uh, he was very prevalent on Twitter about that. Have we heard anything from the Prime Minister's office about this passing at the moment? Well, I think that they will be expected to release a statement uh, shortly if they haven't already, and no doubt there would probably be some sort of state funeral, as there was in the case uh, of Gough Whitlam. I mean, isn't it amazing and terrific that this former Prime Minister uh, was on Twitter? You know, he really did uh, continue to engage in Australian public life uh, in, in such a, a fascinating way. He was so accessible. Uh, he was such an interesting man to talk to. I always remember that, you know, if you wanted Malcolm Fraser to, um, you know, write, a, write an op-ed or write a piece for the paper, you didn't necessarily have to go up through his office. You could ring him at the farm. He'd often pick up the phone. Uh, he'd want to know how many words he needed to write and he'd say, yep, that'll be all right, and, and it would arrive via email. He was uh, still a very disciplined writer and I think it's one of the reasons why I think his passing is such a shock. Um, you know, Gough Whitlam was obviously quite frail and, and, you know, clearly unwell for a number of years. Um, but Mr Fraser always seemed, you know, in absolutely fine health uh, and it was very strong, uh, you know, very passionate, very, um, you know, articulate advocate for the causes that he was interested in. So I think that that has clearly uh, come as a, a great shock to his uh, you know, former colleagues and, and uh, you know, I think it'll come a shock to, to many voters who've, who've watched him continue to advocate for all of these causes over the years. And, and, and no cause was closer to his heart than, than human rights, as you touched on, Samantha. I mean, he wrote a, a very impassioned piece, didn't he, recently, um, about the importance of the, of the Human Rights Commission in defence of Gillian Triggs. He wasn't afraid to get right in amongst it, was he, on, on, on current issues that were, that were you know, at, at the top of the national agenda, if you like. Yeah, I think that's absolutely right, Georgia. He, he wasn't timid um, about having his say, and I think that that's a terrific thing. It's always an interesting debate uh, within the Liberal Party of whether the Liberal Party moved to the right or Malcolm Turnbull moved to the left. I suspect that there's a bit of, a bit of both that's gone on. Um, but he, he was passionately interested in these social issues, um, you know, even as a younger politician. Uh, he was an early uh, opponent of apartheid. Uh, he spoke out a, 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 on that issue. And, of course, he was very involved uh, with a staffer of his, Petro Giorgio, who later became a very influential Liberal MP uh, who fought against mandatory detention during the Howard years. He was very involved in, um, you know, developing the refugee policy uh, in, in terms of Vietnamese boat people uh, and, and how to handle that issue in Australia, uh, you know, went under his leadership. Um, he was obviously very passionate about the plight of refugees. Um, he continued to advocate that over the years. Uh, so I think that, you know, these were issues that he was interested in over a long period of time. I don't I don't think that he, he woke up one day after politics or after becoming Prime Minister necessarily and completely shifted his views on this. 
Um, he wasn't prepared to have a fight. Uh, in 1971, he actually quit uh, the ministry when he was Defence Minister over uh, what he regarded as John Gorton uh, interfering in his ministerial responsibilities. That event uh, was obviously uh, quite pivotal in the eventual uh, election of Billy McMahon as Prime Minister, which I think Gorton never forgave him for. And <laughs> Billy McMahon, of course, um, reappointed him to the front bench. Uh, so, you know, he was he was a person who was uh, involved in these sort of tumultuous events, but he obviously had a, quite a commitment to social policy. Yeah. Um, Samantha, thank you so much for your time this morning and this great insight into this great leader who is now, uh, once again, as we, uh, we're breaking the news to Malcolm Fraser, has passed away this morning. And it's you know, on Twitter, there's been a lot of... Uh, huge you know, reaction. Huge reaction, obviously, because he was so prevalent on Twitter right up until just two days ago. Uh, Sarah Hansen young the Green Senator, said Mr Fraser was a politician of principle, a leader of compassion, and that she is devastated. And a former Fraser government minister, Fred Cheney, says Australia has lost one of its, lost one of its great moral compasses. Yeah, all right. Vale Malcolm Fraser.